In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, the sermon is going to be short today, uh, but it's going to be very, very powerful. It's powerful because of the meaning, not because it's me that delivers it. One of the things that the Jews were looking for in order to identify the Messiah was that he was going to feed them eternally. To be fed eternally. And they were thinking that this meant they would not have to work. They would not have to be the ones who prepared meals. That this this would be a, a continuous feast. You know they murmured in the desert when they were fed with manna. And you know that they followed Jesus Christ aggressively after the multiplication of the fish and the bread. And this happened on more than one occasion. You know this. And the Lord takes them to task and, and says, Who do you think I am? What, what would be the sign? What would be the sign? Everyone is looking. Everybody is looking for something that is peculiar to their own personality. But for those who have understood the scriptures as the Jews did, and by the way, you know, the Pharisees get a bad rap. I don't know if you understand this, but the Pharisees were the liberal group of Jews. They were the ones with whom Jesus bothered to dialogue because there was some wiggle room in their philosophy and their theology, and he could make them understand things that the other sect, the Sadducees, never would. The Sadducees primarily, you, you could compare them like to senators of the United States, whereas the Pharisees were like the Congress people. 435 Congress people, 100 senators. In about that same ratio, the Sanhedrin was comprised of not just the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but also wise people, sometimes crafts people. Um, it, was, it was not always a, a whole collection. You could have a Sanhedrin with 10 people. I mean, um, you, you could have the, 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 the entire meeting and, and it would have that full weight. Um, but the Sadducees derived their income from the proceeds of the pilgrims who had come to the temple to worship. We know about this from the money changers, those people who said, well, you know, a denarii is not always a denarii. You know, sometimes it's half a denarii, like in the temple. <laughs> this, is, um, this, this is the kind of business that you get when you say, you, you see in, in um, in Spanish, you see the word cambio, you know, check cashing place. You take your check in and your check says $100, but you don't leave with $100. <laughs> you leave with something else. Now they will say, well, we've taken the risk. We have the place. We have all of these things that are accessible to people that are undocumented and therefore can't get accounts and normal financial institutions. So we're providing this. But they would have nothing to do with the one that God sent because their, their position would no longer be important. And, 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 and you know, this is, this is such an image when, when you see what the Lord has done. And not to go too far afield, but when the disciples collected basketfuls after everybody had eaten. It's symbolic about how the church is going to feed after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, I was told a long time ago that before the Lord's um, passion, death and resurrection, that um, he was trying to prove his divinity 
give evidence of his divinity, that he came from God the Father, that he and God were, were one. After the resurrection, it's his humanity. He's saying, here I am. I, am, I have not changed in any way. The things that you have seen now, though, should take place in your mind as the principles by which you yourselves are going to go forward and to preach to all nations. So when the Lord Jesus Christ is giving, he's saying, this is my flesh. Now we know, we know what his blood tastes like. The wedding of Cana and Galilee. This is the Lord's wine, a completely different wine, not an intoxicating beverage, but something so delicious and so sustaining that the master of the feast said, ah, how wise you are. Most people put the good wine out first, and then later on, after everyone is a little bit inebriated, they bring out the lesser wine. But you have saved the best wine for last. The best, the best wine didn't have any alcoholic content. It wasn't to make a man's mind muddled. It was to make it more focused. We know what he had given us. And in each time, and he, he declares it again to the Samaritan woman at the well. He says, I will give you water to drink. And you drink this water and you'll never thirst. Well, what is this water, Lord? You don't even have a water pot. This is Jacob's well. What are you going to do to give me more than I am already able to do for myself? And then with certain evidences, he gathers her, brings her close to him, and she, she sees who he is. The scales, as it were, drop from her eyes, and she sees the Lord come see a man who told me all that ever I did. Is this not the Messiah? Is this not the Christ? Is this not the one? Look at the Jews. Why, why was it that, 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 that they chased him all the way across the lake? You know, I've been hungry in my life. Not hungry, hungry. But I've gone 24 hours without eating or drinking, you know, and, and I'm sure some of you have gone even longer, perhaps. Things taste good after you've gone 24 hours without eating or drinking, but not so much as I'm going to row a boat across the lake to get it again. Five barley loaves. Barley, the poorest grain available, and some little fish. This wasn't sushi. <laughs> this was just some fish. There's always something special about what the Lord presents to us. There are layers of understanding there are layers that if we will allow it to filter through our body, it will meet so many needs simultaneously that sometimes we feel as though it's a disguise that what happened? I, I don't understand it. I don't see it clearly. I, my perceptual field isn't ready for this. But the Lord again and again, he, he says, where was I born? Where was I born? Was it not called the house of bread? Was I not born in Bethlehem? Was anybody ever born in Bethlehem of any note? No, just the one who is going to give you the bread of life, the bread of everlasting life. And I'm going to give this power to your children and your children are going to pass it. And the Jews, the Jews who didn't see themselves as a kind of example, but saw themselves as a unified whole representing humanity. Do you think that the Lord is going to save just this little group of people by feeding them? 
where there are so many nations and so many people populating the world? No, the Lord doesn't see that way. But he's saying this is symbolic of what is going to take place eternally. You will never thirst. You will never run out. You will eat today, ladies and gentlemen. You will drink today, ladies and gentlemen. And you will drink tomorrow and the next day. And every day you come into the house of God and he will feed you. The Lord, um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest before me no, they, thou preparest for me a table in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely mercy and goodness will follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell, I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Think about this prayer. Think about this. The Jews knew this way better than me. The Jews were saying this all the time. They had this expectations of the Messiah. Yet when he comes and he does all of these things, they refuse him. And again, did they refuse him because of their intellect or their emotion? They didn't want to be displaced. They, you know, if, if the Lord takes a, a job away from you, He's going to give you a different job. Well, it's not the job that I planned for. Well, he's going to give you a different job. You're going to get something else to do. Don't worry about what you left. You now have this to do. And though so many things have been wrought by the hand of God in the life of the Jewish nation, yet when presented with the living son, they didn't believe. I hope that uh, you're informed by what I've just said. And I hope that, you know, when you think about communion, you think about the five loaves and two fish. As a matter of fact, we, I've ordered two more icons. <laughs> the last three haven't been delivered yet. Michael Tanius isn't here, so I can't. I don't know if he sent the money to Stefan. Stefan holds the icons until we, he gets payment. <laughs> so... Um, but we're going to get an icon, a large icon of the prophet being given the hot coal from the altar of incense by the angel, which is a significant, a significant of communion. You're taking this very hot coal. And the other one will be the five loaves and the two fish. And it's going to be on either side of the Pantocrator. Until we get a, a, you know, the church reformed and we have a hegab. But as I say, icons are windows to perception and they will never ever lose their value whether or not we have them in the same location or not. Uh, it's been a long time since I've given a sermon because I have so many issues uh, health-wise um, and it feels a little strange, but I, I, I'm, I'm going to get back into the rhythm, I hope, by God's grace. So pray for me that um, he uh, continues to aid me in healing my back and um, that I may serve better. Glory be to his holy name, both now and ever and under the age of all ages. Amen.